Good morning, and thank you for coming. Um, my name is Orwan Herabia. I'm the artistic director of ITFA. And this is a, a very uh, uh, dear session to me, because uh, a few ladies in France, uh, including our dear guests, Julie and Florence, and Laurence, <laughs> sorry, uh, uh, took this initiative a year and a half ago, a year ago, after I'm sure a lot of many other years of hard work before that. But then they uh, sat together, probably, I imagine, and came up with this concept, 50-50 by 2020. And it somehow immediately had a resonance in our ears in ITFA, as much as with others, I'm sure, around the world. They kind of um, set our agenda for us. And I think this is an amazing thing to do. We uh, were already discussing the general points and we were already committed in many different ways uh, to trying and doing better about the subject in hand. But somehow somebody came from outside and gave us the actual agenda. If you want to do it, one, two, three, four, five. And that was extremely helpful. It's kind of a deferral that we did. And we said, OK, then how do we do this? We follow the rules. There are rules set. And that was, in a way, empowering to us as a festival. Because then we rely on a network. We, we rely on experts who invested serious time and effort into setting the agenda. And we just become part of this international process. We signed the pledge. We did it documentary style. Uh, what means that we, I think, were, uh, we signed it early on, uh, but uh, it was not in the news because uh, I didn't think about it. We received the email inviting us to sign, and there was the pledge. And what we did, me and Case, the executive director of ITFA, was we actually just printed it, signed it, scanned it, and sent it back. <laughs> so we didn't have a good event. <laughs> we didn't have a big pledge to sign in front of cameras. And then actually, the most, um, the most documentary style thing that we did was that we actually did it. So um, in a way, I personally never met the people behind 50-50-2020. I met one of, your, one of the co-founders, Delphine, uh, for three minutes. But we feel that uh, you are already part of our process. Without further ado, I want to thank you very much for being with us, but also thank you very much for the great contribution you have made to our world. And uh, I think we are very privileged to get the chance to listen to you firsthand and to hear from you about what's happening and what's the future going to be like for 50-50-2020 as a collective, and also see what is it that we should do. Can you please? take the stage, and thank you very much, Tessa, for moderating. Thank you so much, Orwa. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, I, I think this is the most beautiful introduction you can have from the director himself. But I'm very honored to invite to the stage Julie, Billy, and Laurence Lascari. Please welcome. So before we start, I would like to know, because it's very uh, key, I think, to the conversation that we're going to have, um, who of you is familiar with um, issues around gender parity and inclusion? Okay, so pretty much. Who of you have, um, do, doesn't know the details about the collective? Okay, that's about me, so we have to talk uh, uh, more profound about that. Okay, but we are seem in a room with people who are quite familiar with the topic, so we can uh, dive into um, 
these issues. But first, I would like to um, ask about you personally. Uh, you both work in the industry as producers, and um, how did your personal journey um, evolve into being part of this initiative? Mm. Laurence, maybe you start. Okay. Uh, so, as you say, I'm a film producer. Uh, my company is called De l'autre côté du périph which means uh, outside of the Sarko world that is around Paris. And it shows that my engagement is really part of uh, my job as a producer. I decided to create my company uh, 12 years ago uh, because when I was younger, I had the opportunity to travel to many places. And I, I was intrigued by the fact that uh, when I was saying that I was French, people were often surprised. They were astonished to see a French person that was looking like me, simply because um, France did not um, uh, represent uh, minorities in its fiction or in its media in general. And that was, um, that's how it, it clicked inside me, and I decided to... Um, to, um, to show the narrative of uh, the people who, like me, uh, grew up in uh, working class areas, uh, people of color, minority in general, and to tackle the um, stereotypes and uh, um, representation, because I had the feeling, and then I documented it, that uh, it has an, an effect um, in what we called in France the living together, the, the, the acceptance of um, uh, everybody regardless of, their, of our differences, but also in the perception that people, concerned people, uh, have about themselves. Let me give you an example. If there is a, a black kid, for instance, who, who see black, black, a black male kid who see on television uh, only uh, black uh, sportsmen or, um, um, I don't know, thugs, etc. How c w is he going to uh, represent himself uh, and to and have many dreams and, and, and not um, accept the, the, those stereotypes? So I wanted to tackle those stereotypes. So um, I created my company 11 years ago. And um, being very active also outside of the, my everyday job as a producer. And uh, in 2017, there uh, came the Weinstein uh, scandal. And this uh, is what made me realize that we were not there when it comes to um, gender equality. I knew that there, there was only 20% uh, or so uh, female producers in France, so I knew that that was something, but um, I never uh, questioned the, um, this gender um, issue, maybe because um, it's not something easy to, to do to discuss privileges, because when you talk about uh, inequalities, then you talk about privileges. And being a minority myself, being a woman myself, maybe I, I, I felt uncomfortable uh, um, openly talking about, about it. But then came Weinstein, and I was like, and I, I started to open up and discuss with uh, uh, other uh, uh, female professionals, and that's when I decided that I wanted to be part of the change also when it comes to gender issues. And, that's, and then a uh, couple of weeks after that, I received an email inviting me to a meeting, and it was the, the first meeting, the, crea the uh, creational meeting of the, the collective. And that was in um, January uh, 2018. 2018. Okay. Yes. We're making history here, so <laughs> let's uh, pay attention to the data. And on, on Thank my you, side, we, we, 
we created an association with Delphine Bess, uh, who is uh, also a co-president and a co-founder of the collective that was called Le Deuxième Regard 10 years ago. We were a very young professional and uh, uh, the, the girls were working in sales, uh, sales agents and I was, uh, I was already a young producer. And we were looking at our industry and we, we were feeling that there was a lack of, uh, of female directors and producers and a lack of uh, awareness of the fact that we were missing female uh, in our industry. And we were uh, um, uh, feminists since a young age and we decided to create this network and uh, we were gathering and, and making uh, premieres and having uh, um, social media and announcing, uh, announcing the release of the film. But politically, we didn't have a word. We didn't have, we didn't have ears, actually. Like, no one would hear us. And why would no one would hear us is because we didn't have data. And the first thing that we did when we created the collective it was to go and look for these data, these figures that we were missing, because basically the first figures that we got was that we were looking at the trades uh, like 10 years ago. We were taking the trades and taking all the films that were released in France for one year and counting the, fi the female directors. And there was a, a, around 20%. And, uh, and when we, we created the collective, the first thing was to actually show the data. And, and, and there were talking and then people would listen to us because we had those data. So we gathered, when Weinstein arrived, we already had this uh, association, but um, no one would really take a stand, like, like public figures would be a bit, um, would, would feel at risk. And when Weinstein and the Me Too movement came up, and no one, no one actually take a stand in France. Me, the Me Too movement was really a, uh, was not something like we hear, we heard about Weinstein, but no, no, no one actually to stand up. And we decided in January, and the Weinstein was uh, was uh, in October, November. In January, we gathered and we said, okay, that's not normal that in France we're not taking this momentum. So we gathered, we were 40 at the first meeting, um, only female at this first meeting, and then we decided, of course, to open up to male because 50-50, it's not 50 blonde girl and 50 brown girl, it's 50 male and 50 female. And, and, and male are part of the problem, but they're also part of the solution and they must also take action, and I'm really happy that mm. in this audience we have men, and that uh, it's still not uh, not 50-50, but uh, they are like in our in our when we do our conferences and our mm. workshops, there are men, and, and it's important that men stand up also on this uh, on this cause. So we gathered, we were 40, we we first uh, got those numbers, and then we were we we made this um, this call. Uh, this uh, this called for 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 a movement. We were 300, 600 the next month. We organized the first workshop workshop in March. We were 100 gathering actors, mm -hmm. uh, directors, producers, people from all the industry, distributors. We all met and we we had four workshops that day. One on harassment, one on uh, salary equality one on festivals and one about uh, stereotypes and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And this is where we decided to actually uh, create the initiative. Like it was always a movement about initiative and action and not about looking at the problem and blame the problem and blame whoever is in charge of the power. It was more, okay, we have the power. We are part of this, this industry. We are directors, we are producers, we have the power. How can we change it? How can we take this momentum and transform it into action? And I guess, and it was joyful. It was never something, um, it was joyful. Like we were, we knew that we could make something uh, uh, joyful and not blaming anyone or not shaming anyone. So that's how we gather and we created this movement, sorry. Um, it seems really important because also, Laurence, what you said, to take this issue from a very personal perspective, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a person of a minority, um, to a, um, a broader social and political issue. 
So that momentum created by the Me Too movement was key mm -hmm. to have this discussion and data was really supporting the urgency of that. And uh, talking about data, we're not going through all the data, but there's mm -hmm. one key data issue, I think, especially on this stage, that's really important to mention, that in documentary, most people, also working in the field of documentary, have the perception that in documentary films, it's pretty okay, yeah. so it could be pretty well balanced. Is that the case in France, at least? No, I, we have to go back, but uh, when you look at this number, it's like you can see that it's 29% only of female directors into the theatrical uh, release of, uh, of documentaries. So you have even the female directors who were at the workshops with us, they were like, oh, but in our field, there it's are okay. way more women, it's mm -hmm. okay. But actually, when you look at the numbers, and and in documentary film for TV, the, so the smaller budget uh, documentary films, there are lots of women, but when you go to the documentaries that are uh, financed for cinema and so that, are that have bigger budget, you go to this 29%, which is kind of the same number as the fiction, uh, f fiction theatrical film. Okay, so documentary is still doing better than fiction? Little. But uh, it's not uh, balanced out yet? No. Okay, so and there's... In general, the higher the budget of the film is, the lower uh, the, propor the proportion yeah. of uh, a female director is. Okay, so that power mechanism is still the same mm -hmm. within documentary films. Yeah. Um, so, all this accumulated income, can you just briefly describe, because I think, who was there in Cannes? when the pledge was uh, initiated. Oh, can you please describe what it was like to be there? Well, it was a lot of work because uh, we, we have jobs also. We, we mm -hmm. produce film, we direct film. And, but uh, Céline Siama and Rebecca Zotowski, who are two uh, powerful film directors in France right now, um, and who created this collective uh, with us, um, they really take the risk to stand up and make the voice. They were the voices, because without people who have power mm -hmm. and who take the voice, this movement would never happen, because the press would not listen to us, mm -hmm. the people who have the power in festivals would not listen to us. So the fact that they took a risk, and it was a risk, because both of them were financing their films at that moment, they were both in like the rising of their career, and you don't want to be tackled of a hysterical feminist, because this is what we used to be tackled when we, we get yes. the, into the subject. They, they used the little privilege they had, because they were, uh, compared to other uh, women, they had good uh, salary, they, they were like, they were doing okay for themselves, but they decided to use their power, and this is what the collective is about. It's a gathering of women, and some of them, they are women of power, to, um, to be stronger together and to, uh, uh, to, to use, to put together all our networks, all our ideas, all our creativity to, uh, to gain change. And the collective is really a, a do tank because um, our goal is to activate change uh, instead of only uh, discussing it or um, um, find ideas. No, we do more than uh, finding ideas, we do it, and we we work with um, uh, administration. We work with the government because in France the the government is very um, uh, active, especially when it comes to culture and uh, and film. The, the France is an interventionist state, uh, so very um, um, very early we decided to. Um, to uh, give, uh, to, to find solutions and work with uh, the administration to, to, um, to obtain the change we were looking for. So can we look at the picture yeah. of uh, the yeah, film? So I'm, then we I'm see the women where it's about. Mm -hmm. So these were the women in Cannes in 2018 yeah. who uh, created the, the, the wave, so to say. Yeah, actually, the, when we, the, the collective always ha tried to have two actions at the same time. Mm -hmm. One, which is the image, that's why 
that's how the press comes, mm -hmm. and to have an action that is more uh, the industry, the industry action, something very concrete, something very, um, yeah, concrete. And the, the, this stairs and this march was um, getting along the, the, the parity pledge, the parity and diversity pledge that uh, Thierry Frémaux at the Cannes Film Festival signed along the director of the, the Quinzaine des Réalisateurs and uh, Charles Tesson from the Critics Week. And this pledge, uh, that IDFA sign without this all first, but sign and really uh, applied, is a, is a pledge that asks a very simple thing. First, the transparency of the programming committee, meaning to get parity in the programming, uh, uh, in the pr programming committee, because when you have people uh, from diverse uh, um, backgrounds, then you can have a more diverse uh, programming as well. Um, it was also about getting the numbers, because we could not point out to the festival saying, you have only one female director in your competition if we don't know mm -hmm. how many films were actually right. sent out uh, to the festivals for and, and applying to the festival. So we wanted to get the, the data. And then it was like more about um, trying to, to get awareness from the festival programmers, um, uh, administration committees about parity and, and about the fact that they had to install parity in their power, power management and power uh, instance. So that was the pledge that was signed uh, during Cannes, and it was going along this uh, very powerful image uh, that uh, Céline, Rebecca, and, and uh, ten of us uh, built up together. And uh, and the first one who came with us was uh, Kate Blanchett. Uh, of course, Thierry Frémo was uh, willing. Uh, he knew that there was a moment, a political moment, and he could not um, pass through it, and he, he had to do something. He knew that, but he didn't really know how. So he he gave us uh, free uh, uh, free access, and we went to uh, to Kate Blanchett through our Times Up movement, um, and uh, we went through also the Times Up UK movement, and to all the the, the, the this movement that got created after after the Me Too movement everywhere in the world, we we gathered together and uh, and we we voila Kate Blanchett really came came very quickly on board and say I'm here, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm, I'm here with you and so that's that's what made it possible to have this image. Well wow. it's incredible in a way that it's the first time in history that this is happening mm -hmm. in an industry that has such a powerful influence on how we perceive the world in a much broader sense. Um, I have to say that um, I'm opening also the room for you to ask questions. So if there's something you want to say or ask, just, yes, just shout because I won't be looking at you all the time, but there's a question here. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask um, the collective: Is it uh, is it in, um, the intention to to escalate it to another countries? I mean, is it something only of France and people that uh, live in the in the area of France, or is in your mind a way of escalating it to I don't know um, other countries or uh, something? Let's say leave it leave it open manifesto for everyone to take uh, a step uh, and do something like that in their own countries? That's my question, yeah. It's a good question because yeah. there are many countries who signed up. Uh, so the pledge is very, uh, it's uh, international. Uh, since we, we've been touring, actually the third co-president who is not here today, Delphine Bess, Delphine Bess, who is a sales agent, she's been touring to uh, as many festivals as possible to have the pledge signed. And here you have a map, uh, 100 and, uh, oh, 115 uh, countries have signed, uh, festivals, sorry, I have signed yet, uh, mostly in France because uh, we are French uh, and we cannot change it. But you can see that um, also in uh, other continent, um, mostly in Europe, some festivals also in uh, North America, but we're still uh, working on it and um, working with uh, festivals 
most of the main festivals have signed the pledge and um, we're still working on it and every month there is a new festival signing uh, the pledge. And then we are working with them, collecting data. We're working with other organizations uh, all over the world and we, uh, we take the opportunity of uh, an international event to gather and to discuss. We did it, for instance, this year in the, uh, during the Berlinale, during the Cannes Film Festival. So we are working with our counterparts uh, all over the world. Yeah, the, the, I think the collective uh, work really with the, the French politics as well. So we know our industry. We know way less the American one or the Dutch one. So we cannot, so we are happy to discuss with all the organizations that are uh, getting creating all around the world to, because we got inspired a lot from Sweden, for instance, on, on several um, initiatives that we took. Um, but we are happy to share everything that we are, act and everything is on our website, for instance. There is no, like, the, everything is transparent. So we are very happy to share our initiatives so that every collective around the world, every woman group, uh, TV and film group, get inspired and, and try to implement that in every country. But we cannot actually go to Berlin, to go to Germany and say, you should have mm. this uh, uh, bonus incentive, uh, public bonus incentive that we actually implemented in France with the CNC, our national, uh, uh, our national uh, authority, uh, film authority, because we don't know the exact, uh, you know, the system in every country. So every country and every people from each uh, country from the industry have to uh, get together and, and, and create this movement. And, and we get inspired, and I hope that we inspire as well, but uh, it's, uh, it's really, um, it's a question of uh, coordination. So we are happy every <laughs> Cannes Film Festival, for instance, is really a, 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 a moment where we gather and we meet the girl from the girl from Times Up. Times Up, not Times Out. Uh, <laughs> Times Up. Almost uh, out. Yeah, mm -hmm. almost out. Times Up or the Greek, uh, the Greek uh, uh, woman waves, or you know, we we meet together and we talk about what we did this year. And but. Um, we don't have this, uh, so we have a purpose of international, but we don't want to regulate every... Uh, every or to be at the center of the an international yeah, network. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise we couldn't, uh, we would have to leave our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> it's important <laughs> that you stay the, in the industry yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. as professionals. Um, you just mentioned Sweden as a big example, yeah. and I think, uh, maybe not everyone knows, but the Swedish Film Institute, uh, led by Anna Serner, mm -hmm. the yeah. director, CEO, I think, um, has really put a mark on this discussion. I think she's a great example, or the institute, but also she as a person is a great example for the f full international industry. What happens yeah. if big institutes like a film in national film institute really backs up uh, gender parity and uh, uh, with a very strong policy? Yeah. But at the same time, Laurent, you started already about this in your uh, introduction. What happens if a government doesn't support? Because you have also experienced that in a way. Yeah. Um, what happens then? And what is, how can you affect change when there's an unwilling institute, government? Mm -hmm. What do you do? When you want to change an organization or a system, it's better to have the support of the top um, decision level of this government, this system, this organization. So we were very, we felt very strong to receive the support for our Ministry of Culture, the, the previous one, François Nissen, the new one, uh, Franck Rister, and also the, the, the head of the French Film Office, uh, Centre, uh, le CNC, Centre National uh, du Cinéma. Uh, the previous one, Frédéric Bredin, the new one, Dominique Boutonna, because they feel that they have to support us. It's political and they, they cannot not support us. So that's how we work on um, a bonus for um, um, a gender parity in film crews. We worked, we discussed with the, the CNC and we came up together with this solution but there is something we have not discussed about yet, is the inter intersectionality. 
uh, because the, the collective has been inter intersectional from its very beginning. Yeah, which because means a lot of people think it's just gender, yes. but it's we more. Address it's, you know. we, we discuss the uh, distribution of power in uh, all fields, not only gender, but also um, uh, racial and, uh, and so forth, handicap and so forth. And we do it step by, by step. That's why we came up first with this uh, gender parity bonus. And this year, we have worked on um, uh, the, the inclusion also, and with many workshops. We worked on how to, um, to work on audiovisual, uh, not only cinema, but also audiovisual, also uh, distribution <coughs> and, and exhibition of films. So we, we implement things uh, step by step. And when it came to inclusion and diversity, we knew that it was going to be tough because when it comes to gender parity, you can count. You have data. You can say that, look, uh, there is something wrong. We should work on it. Let's uh, set up some uh, objectives and let's work on it. And when it comes to um, diversity, I mean uh, uh, ethnical diversity, <coughs> the answer we got was, yes, we know it's important. We, we are with you guys, but ethnical statistics are uh, forbidden. It's in the constitution. There is nothing we can do because we can't count. And this is the answer we got and we got from all authorities. But through um, our workshops, we came up with ideas. We work with um, uh, people um, from minority, we were, uh, working with more in influential uh, people from the industry. And we came, we came up with uh, a pledge. And this pledge was signed um, two weeks ago by uh, the main uh, uh, organization from the industry. Uh, producers' organization, agent, um, um, uh, writers, directors, directors, line producers, yes, and uh, distribution, uh, fin, casting, uh, and casting directors. agents, yes. Wow. So, it we realized, we found out that we were able also to um, to be creative and to talk directly to our counterparts, to the, our, the other professionals, and we did not necessarily need uh, the support of, uh, from the, the government uh, or the top um, uh, decision people, because top decision makers are also within um, the industry and other uh, professionals, so we came up with that. But it also gives us a responsibility to, um, to make this pledge live. Now we, we must also discuss with them all the time, um, monitor uh, the evolution of the pledge because they commit to, for instance, hiring a more diverse crew in their productions or to, um, to uh, recruit uh, interns uh, from... Uh, uh, lower class uh, um, background with lower um, from working class background, it's and so forth. Mm -hmm. And now we have the responsibility to discuss with them and see if it's efficient or not, mm -hmm. because the constitution is not going to to change anytime soon, mm -hmm. or at least I don't believe yes, so, yes. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found other ways to address that issue. Yeah, and it's, 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 yeah. it's a good it's example on, on the international level because we got inspired by the inclusion writer that uh, Frances McDormand talked about in the, in the Oscar uh, last year. Last year. The, Oscar and, speech, yeah, yeah. the famous inclusion writer. Yeah, and we were yeah. wondering, what is this inclusion writer? And we talked a lot with, uh, with uh, American producers uh, who, and, and we, we realized, and with uh, Stacey Smith, uh, who created this inclusion writer. And the inclusion writer is very 
detailed and precise and ask for actually target uh, quotas of, uh, of uh, recruitment, recruitment of uh, people from minorities. Yeah. It's very practical. And we could not install that in France because we, uh, positive discrimination, discrimination, positive act in France is not uh, allowed. So we had to find another way and, and to really get on the wheel of our organization. And the good thing about it is that all of the industry and the top chief industry of these organizations were willing for a change. They were willing for progress on that level. So it was actually pretty easy, not legally easy, because we had to find ways to, um, to get... Uh, it was very torturous. Yes. <laughs> yeah. but, but that was interesting to see how everyone wanted to actually act, but they didn't get the tool. And the fact that we collectively um, got together, spoke about it, put awareness in every little organization, in all the chain of, of the production and the fabrication of the film, the fact that we all were together on, with the same will make our industry more diverse, we just had to create a tool that was getting along the, the, the pledge, and this tool is a website called the Bible 5050, where you can actually for free just register your name and your, uh, and your CV when you are from minority or when you are a female assistant director, director, uh, maker artist, uh, customer. In spite uh, of where you come from, it doesn't matter where you come from. Uh, no, it yeah. doesn't. Well, yeah. it's mostly French because mm -hmm. right now the, the platform is French. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that with, when you sign this pledge, you can go on this website mm -hmm. and recruit people from this website who registered themselves on this website. And you have, because the, the thing that we, we, we got answered all the time was, I don't know where, where? I can find people yeah. from diversity. I don't know where, where they are, where, where I can find them. Well, it's, now it's easy. You have the tool. You, just, you cannot say, I don't know, I don't know people. And, and there was something that Uda Benyamina, who's a French director, said uh, two weeks ago that was very interesting and very important, is that we don't meet, like, people from minorities and female don't lack talent, they lack occasions. Mm. And the only reason and the only way we can actually uh, make these occasions happen is that when we, producers and, and line producers and casting agents and casting directors, own a little bit of power, is to redistribute this power and to create occasions for others. It's so interesting to, when you see this whole field, the wave that you've created, the wave created by the Me Too movement, the creation of 5050, and then Francis, who says at the Oscar speech, Inclusion Rider. I think after the Oscars, it was the most Googled uh, pair of words uh, yeah. on the uh, browsers. So people are really actively actively looking for how to do this. And then you create this tool for people to, uh, who want change, they can affect change right away by hiring uh, in a different way. Um, are there questions for now? Because otherwise I'll, um, I have a lot of questions myself. Um, giving people tools in the spite of the position or the context they are living in. So for instance, you have a context where it's really hard to get numbers on everything but uh, gender. So sexuality, uh, ethnic uh, background, it's really hard to get numbers about that. But still, you develop tools that can affect change. Mm -hmm. And you evaluate those tools. Yeah. Uh, because apparently it's not enough to make tools and just leave it like that. You have to keep on uh, doing this process. When you look at this moment where you are now with 5050, I know the first ev uh, evolved um, uh, issue is that you left out the 2020. So can you s speak a little bit about that? Because it was first of all, it was called 5050 by 2020. You changed that. Why? It was like um, an outcry, this by 2020 thing, in order to show the emergency of taking action. But we knew from the very beginning that it will never, there was any way that we would get the change we were looking for in uh, less than two years. It was impossible. And we knew it, but it sounded uh, very powerful. Mm -hmm. It created like urgency. We are not here yeah. We are not here to play. We want the change and we want it now. Yes. So that was the, the idea. 
time's up, you've got maximum two years to do it. <laughs> yeah. um, what other things do you think are really key uh, points that have been um, evolving since you started? Because there was a congress last week, yeah. so there must be other things that you really looked at and uh, decided to adjust well, or take to the next step? Well, first of all, is that the bonus that you talked about earlier, this incentive for production that have parity crew, mm -hmm. it's really working. This year, um, at this time, we have 29 films who got this bonus, um, which is way more, actually, films than if the bonus didn't exist, there would be less films with mm -hmm. parity crew. So it means that this bonus had a real effect on the French production and that um, producers from like big production to smaller production um, really got aware of it and used it and made a change by, mm -hmm. by hiring more women. So this is a good, a good and thing. And they see this change as an opportunity, yes. which is, to me it's, I don't want to compliment ourselves, but to me it's very <laughs> smart because we, we got uh, almost no uh, critics from the, the people from the industry. Were you surprised about that? Uh, I was, yes, still, I was surprised that um, uh, all the, the male uh, producers, for instance, they were welcoming of this, uh, this tool. Mm -hmm. And I think also that something that is new is that we, are, we don't have to convince people that we need to, uh, to change the industry. Mm -hmm. we don't, this is not the discussion. Maybe we disagree on how we're going to get a change, but I think that there is, um, um, it's very consensual to, to ask for the more parity and more diversity. It's so fascinating because a bonus has this connotation of, it's an extra for the privileged and exactly. powerful, you know, mm. something they get on top. But now you use the bonus for to restore that power. Mm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What it looks like, and could it be used by everyone? Yeah, every production, cinema production. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, it's not yet for TV production, but for cinema production, every producer who. Um, hire uh, five uh, female into a nine, uh, nine point or ten point scales. Mm -hmm. um, uh, key uh, key crew member. If five of them are women, then they get a bonus of fifteen percent of uh, public funding. The public funding that you get, which is called the, uh, which is kind of a tax incentive. It works like mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. you can you get a fifteen percent bonus. Um, which and if you don't use it well, then you don't have this fifteen percent. But it's not a. It's so not you're a, not obliged. But you're not yeah. obliged. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want this fifteen percent, just just mm -hmm. go with an all male crew. It's no no problem. But it's just you don't get a malus. You just get a bonus if you do it well. So we, which is. Uh, again, joyful. When I, uh, I come back to this joyful effect, it helps when it's like it's incentive. It's not uh, it's not to shame anyone. It's it's you're not it's being an incentive. punished, but for you're exactly. being rewarded. As yeah. a film directed by a, a male filmmaker can also yeah. have the bonus if the other uh, uh, crew uh, managers are yeah. female. The key positions. For instance, the key positions. Yeah. DOP yeah. or sound engineer. If you hire uh, a um, gender balance crew, mm -hmm. you can pretend to, uh, you can apply to the, the yeah. bonus. And that could also be extended to a more intersectional uh, representation. So not only gender, but also that's people the, from... That's the problem in France, is that we yeah, can't... Because you don't have be numbers. And because the, we can't yeah. uh, define someone by uh, his race, yeah. his yeah. or her yeah. yeah. race. Because of so. the constitution. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to find other ways, that's what you explained, we have to find other ways to, to work on diversity. Yes, and that's also why it's important to talk about gender in an intersectional way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not uh, to see the differences of power positions yeah. of women within um, um, the industry. Yes, question there. Yeah. Well, I was wondering because, uh, oh yeah, sorry. A little bit earlier we talked about the different systems globally and that you said that if you look at other countries, you, you might need a different st strategy. So how would you advise other groups that are looking to, uh, you know, f f 
fight for, for their freedom in this way. And that where do you start? Because you said something about data, you need data to convince people, you need people of power to, to get the press attention. So are there other like big rules of engagement that you would advise to any other group or collective that are about to start this journey that you, you already started? I think it's uh, mostly to stand together and make compromise as well, to listen to each other, because we are not all from the same uh, uh, cultural background or even uh, from the same uh, cinema uh, networks. For instance, Laurence and I, even though we were the same generation, mm -hmm. we were not from the same network. So we didn't know each other and we, we don't work on the same films. And But when we are together on the, on the collective, we are really like, mm. uh, really together. So it's, it's really to, um, I wouldn't say not being radical because we need radicality, but the radical ones need to hear the less radical ones and the less radical ones need to hear the radical ones and to find a compromise and a line and a strong line and a concrete line. This is how the collective actually works, is to find concrete and objective um, tools to, to, to go against this, uh, this inequality. And, uh, and I think that when you gather um, like pretty smart people, we are all smart, mm -hmm. and we have all our histories and we have all of our ideas. When you collect all these ideas and you try to make a line and a, a clear line of it, and you have the here of the power, then it's like, it's a highway. You mm -hmm. can just go on it, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of will. I mean, we are we we have all like uh, we are we are all working on the same at the same time. We are all producing film, directing film. Like Rebecca directed a, a TV series and the yeah, film yeah. the same year as she was uh, very uh, intensively present in the collective. Uh, Celine Siama went to Cannes also with uh, with her film the, the the year after. She worked a lot, but to be dedicated and to you know trust trust in each other and, and, and gather people from very different backgrounds. And I think you need a critical amount of people uh, in order to be representative. Yeah. And also, as Julie said, um, when you have a diverse group in terms of idea and cultural background, it, you can also be more creative and find solutions that uh, nobody is going to contest. Find the shortest way to the change that you're looking for. Yeah. It's a great thing about diversity. Yeah. You become smarter yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about critical mass, um, what is the size of the collective in terms of, uh, do you have numbers in that? Well, we have, uh, we are 1500, now we are 1500 members, uh, 1500 members, uh, but uh, we are three co-presidents and uh, the, the collective that organize everything and that gather every uh, two weeks to uh, actually uh, work on several uh, topics, we are uh, around 20. So the, really the, the office of the collective is 20 people. And uh, then we gather with any member of the collective two, three times a year to discuss the initiative that we want to push. So for instance, on this uh, inclusion pledge that we just uh, implemented, we worked for a year uh, with like Two, uh, two or three, um, three sessions with uh, everyone from uh, who's a signatory of the collective online can join and share ideas and hear and, and give ideas as well. And then we take those ideas and we, we try to implement them in, in what we uh, imagine at first. But it's really a collective, uh, a collective uh, uh, agenda. So we, we are all gathering at one moment of the year and sharing ideas and trying to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to create tools all together. Uh, so, and usually during the sessions, we are around 100, not more than that. But uh, some people are very happy to be, to be signatory, but they don't want to uh, be activists or to be, to be there. Some others are very active and they're, and they're all the time, you know, so. And we are elected as well, so it's, uh, when you're a member, you elect the president and. Uh, and one of our challenge is that um, it's very uh, Paris-centered and we would like to be more uh, agile in order to include uh, people from other regions. Mm -hmm. 
So it's also a very active, it can be an active membership. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have to just sign and yeah, yeah, wait for you guys to do stuff, but yeah, you yeah. can really contribute to yeah. it. Um, just to make sure, how can people join? Are you all, did you all sign the petition? So what, how, how can people join or how can they endorse or support? What well, do they, they need can to do? just go on our website and there is a button say join us and you can either sign the pledge so you're part of the 1500 signatories of the, of the collective or you can also be a member and, and give a donation to the, the association because we are an, asso an association and we, now we hire a coordinator because otherwise we really have to get retired from a job. And, uh, and uh, this, uh, this is an association so you can also get a, a membership. Uh, it's true that for now it's, very, uh, it's French even though our website is, uh, is uh, in English and in French and you can have all the inf information that are in French are also in English on the website. Uh, but for instance, the Bible 50-50, it's mostly for French production on French territory. So if you want to come and work in France, go ahead. But <laughs> for now, we didn't uh, implement the tool to be a, to be a worldwide tool, but uh, maybe it's the next level. Okay. And if you represent an, uh, a non-profit or a group, uh, informal and so forth, you can also write to us and uh, we, will, uh, we will discuss or arrange a meeting. Uh, within the next uh, larger international event. And, um, yes, so numbers are really important mm. to make that number grow. And how about people who want to do a section, a national section? Um, is that also possible or to start a national group that really connects to uh, the initiative? We don't coordinate uh, an international movement, so this uh, organization would have to be independent, mm -hmm. but then, of course, we're willing to discuss and to exchange ideas. Yeah. Uh, so it's a growing and evolving uh, process. Yes. Network. Yeah. It's, you have it's to an, think yeah. of, of it as a network. Yes, that's yeah. a better um, uh, way to look at yeah. it. Are there some more questions? Um, what I was um, thinking is, what is to you, when you look at uh, this past year, and you say it's still evolving, what is the key challenge to keep this movement going? What does it need? Mm. It needs to stay um, agile, to stay um, free and creative, and not um, the organization. The day it becomes the purpose, like, we, we must stop right now. So. We have to, um, to stay as we are, I mean, a group of people aiming for change mm -hmm. and not uh, a group of people aiming uh, to be uh, uh, powerful and to have an influence or mm -hmm. to, yes, to just to exist and to uh, nurture itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be yes. the beginning of the end. I understand, yeah. like yeah. a lot of uh, institutional yes. problems start. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of feminist movement also. We get inspired with all the feminist movement from the 60s and 70s yes. who are very powerful and are part of our heritage, but um, all of them at one point got uh, um, dislocated because uh, of egos, because of radicality against non-radicality. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, again, when we listen to each other and when we try to find solution, and the word compromise is not a bad word. It's, it's, it's a word to actually try to find concrete solutions. That's how we must uh, keep on going. And, and I think it's, uh, we are on a good track on that. And then we have always uh, new challenges. The one for next year is uh, we have a meeting because we said 50-50 by 2020. So in Cannes, uh, we, have a, we, we have a meeting on those stairs and, and we have to um, uh, create a moment to discuss what has, what has changed and to really see the change, discuss it, analyze it, and try to find other tools if it's not enough, and it's not enough. So we have to find other tools. Mm -hmm. And another uh, event that we are um, aiming at um, is to uh, have those two days uh, mentoring mm -hmm. um, in Paris for youth coming from all around France, from social backgrounds, uh, from uh, low social backgrounds, and from minorities. Uh, 
and actually all of the members of the collective will come and, and transmit. That's the idea, is to have like this, transmi this transmission and work on uh, g g giving uh, a strong role models yes. and opportunities to, and to, to work. Also, opportunities. Yes, and yes. it's yes. also Not a, a, a way for us yeah. to mm -hmm. continue to include regular uh, organization of the industry, yeah. uh, uh, producers, uh, association, and so forth, in order uh, so that they can appropriate uh, our uh, um, our uh, calls mm -hmm. and get involved yeah. and find their their place because sometimes when we discuss with a uh, male for instance they'll be like oh can I, I can join actually you have male in your organization and we're like of course and this is something we we want to increase to have more and this is how you you started uh, Judy just by saying that we need more uh, men in our uh, within our organization yes. yeah and um, maybe it will be my last word but um, opportunities in our field is also about being able to meeting, meeting up with the right people. And this mentoring uh, event is uh, an opportunity for the youth to um, get to know the, the job opportunities because you have directors, but not, it's not the only job. And yes, actors, people have, have no have idea what the industry yes. looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And this will be a, a, a good opportunity and to use our uh, what we have built so far uh, for the, this youth and give them opportunities. Well, this is, I think, so key because you started off by saying that maybe more than talent, opportunities are mm -hmm. key to evolve uh, people within the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you've done has created numerous opportunities for the power to be restored. Um, and I hope you keep on doing this and I hope you also will have the support of as many people, men and women in the industry to uh, keep on doing this. And I wish you a lot of luck. We're all looking for a con in 2020 mm -hmm. to see uh, how much you've already um, perceived and achieved. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. I'm sorry, we have to finish up, but um, uh, like they said, you can go to the website. It's in English and everything is there. Um, if you're um, uh, submitting for the email uh, newsletter, you'll also get it. It's in French, but you'll still have uh, um, a perspective on the things that are going on. Um, I thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting this movement. I think it's so important. And, um, well, very, very, very much success with everything that you're doing, both professionally as for the organization. And thank, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Tessa.